Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another installment of Dark Souls 3. Well, today is a special day because we are heading to Arch Dragon Peak, which is a great place, to be honest. And in order to access Arch Dragon Peak, there are certain things we need to do. And primarily, we need to have the Path of the Dragon emote or jester in order to be accessing that place. The gestures, I think, originally came from Demon Souls, but I could be mistaken. I know for certain that the gestures came from Bloodborne, where you do certain gesture in certain places, and it works. And of course, they ported it to Dark Souls 3. This is a very interesting area, to be honest. I really love it. Especially the endgame boss of the area, who's probably going to be a doozy for me. I've been notoriously bad with that boss, so we'll see. The two bosses are very, very concerning to me. One of them is the Nameless King that we'll be fighting probably uh, in the next episode, if I do this correctly. And the second one is in the first DLC, which is also a nightmare. But hey, I'm actually excited to see them. The other reason why I like this place is the cause of the lighting. It's amazing here. You see a blue sky, which is a very rare occurrence in the uh, Dark Souls 3 series. You see the sun, there's the moon on the other side and everything. And this is amazing. The colors aren't, aren't as washed up and gray as the normal game. So, all in all, this is a great place. And these guys do not play around. Oh man. So, this fellow is a bit annoying. Die now. The biz biggest problem in this enemy variation is the two-handed enemy variation. They attack fast and they deal tons of damage. The ones with the shield are kinda easier to manage. Praise the, uh, what? The secret passage, yeah. It's the pointless passage, you mean. No, 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 no. That's not what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to do. There we go. And as you try to read this, you get greeted with an ambush. There we go. Goodbye. The... Bell that you hear, ow, that hurts. The bell that you hear tolling is other enemies ringing a certain bell here. It's a reminiscent feature from Dark Souls 1, if you guys remember. Those of you who played Dark Souls 1, of course. And each time a player in another world rings the bell, you hear that sound, which is amazing, honestly. The other thing is that the Metallica song is gonna be stuck in my head. The one that starts with the bells that I just, just right now forgot its name. But you know what I'm talking about. There's a very, very distinct and a very famous Metallica song that has, oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's for whom the bell tolls. There you go. I like it. It's one of their best songs too. So yeah. All items taken in this place. There's going to be a ton of uh, blood chunks, uh, titanite chunks and stuff, so this is a really good place. Also, the farming is decent here. Although, to be honest, the best place to farm is, without a doubt, the Ringed City. We can get quickly 100k souls without doing too much trouble. Especially when they give you, or when you discover, the covetous Silver Ring plus 3. That's so far so good. You know what? 
Let me take this first. Oh, hi. Die. The lightning clutch ring. Really, really good in a faith build. You deal with a lightning based weapon or lightning and infused weapon and this ring you're going to be dealing a ton of damage that goes without saying this is our first kind of tough enemy but before we fight him we should probably go deal with a smaller one because he's breathing flames on me and that could be proving problematic uh, he's dead goodbye much easier than my other character that goes without saying I'm really really starting to ask questions about the intelligence build and its importance but we'll see maybe it's just that I'm used to the game and I'm used to fight with these weapons and dexterity and everything because I always have a dexterity based character in all the Souls series. Here we find the toughest boss in history of Dark Souls 3. Seriously. The joke. It's not a boss, it's a joke. It's one of the uh, Many people have it in their list of uh, pointless bosses and stupid bosses, and uh, I understand why. It's not really even a fight, you just want to rush to a certain point. Uh, he's going to be breathing frame flames at you, and he's just going to be dodging that until you reach that certain point. And then you drop from his... at his head... and kill him. Oh good, at least he's helping me, instead of killing me. So that's one, and then you continue. Right here the area is going to be starting to be a little tough. Goodbye. Titanite chunk. Small little divert secret passage. Twin killing titanite, always good. That is not a very, really a big problem. Uh, it's just a nuisance, this dragon. Or this wyvern, it's not a dragon. All you need to be mindful of is his flames. Other than that, you just need to focus on the enemies that are going to be thrown at you. Especially here, for example, there's going to be a ambush. Oh, seriously. Did he just parry me? I didn't even see the parry. Like I said, the dual wielding serpent heads are the biggest problem. Hmm. Was it just me or did he just kind of bugs? There you go. Die. And die. And goodbye. Should probably leave a message here saying ambush ahead, but whatever. That used to be always mob enemy. Serious. Oh, so you th they think that you'd be coming running through the says and those two drop down before you and they will make you have a wonderful evening. Goodbye. Since we dealt with those, this is a much easier area. And we're almost reaching the uh, climax of the boss fight. There's just like a couple of enemies top here I need to take care of and some loot I need to take and then we're off to off the white van. Anyway, so you. Ow. One gripe I have with the Gothard sword is that the double attack takes a bit of 
a while in order to come out, so I need to adjust to the animation. Otherwise, I will always take a hit by the enemies. See you soon, and goodbye. Then there's you. And goodbye. I really, really should start leveling up my atonement. But I thought, okay, so I'm gonna level up to 35 dexterity first, and then I start putting all my pawns that I gain into atonement. I need around 18 atonement to have two slots, two extra slots, and you know, enough FP to use weapon arts and uh, that occasional ability. Come on. This guy is a bit tricky because his weapon is a ranged weapon, so careful of him. And he's not alone. He's got a sniper on the other side that is dealing damage to me. There we go. Killed him before he killed me. That's gone. And then... You. I need to run through this place because that dragon is going to be breathing flames here really soon. There we go. Told you. Don't bother with this vanity. I think he was placed here just to stall time for you in order to try and kill him. And then the dragon is going to be breathing fl flames on you and killing you. Undoubtedly. Like a good boy. As you come to this particular platform, he's going to be just sitting there. Not even flying or trying to hit you. Breathing flames, you know, inconsistently and uh, not even being able to reach you. I thought if they wanted to make this a bit more interesting, they should have just made him fly a bit and in you know have a normal boss face phase that you just needed to hide in some cover here until he landed and then you come and try to take your opportunity and try to kill him because all I need to do right now is this and I die <laughs> I think there was just this small back thought on the back of my head telling me, I think you're gonna die. For some reason, you always, you know, have a horrible, horrible fate. When you start saying that something is easy, a boss is easy in Dark Souls 3, and you try to explain how to defeat it, and there is always something that is gonna be happening that will kill you. Of course, in reality of things, this is not a coincidence. It's only the fact that I did not wait to see where his head is, the position of his head is. If I did that, and would be coming through this way, uh, you know what, let's do that now. Let's do this now. It's pointless to wait and waste time. Amber. Amber. And a dung pie. And they, the reason there why they had that... Oh no, come on. Come on. For some reason, my Bluetooth stopped working or something. I do use a wireless controller, and for some reason, it kept running into that direction, even though I stopped moving into that direction. Tough luck for me. <laughs> Tough luck for me. I hate when this happens. I think I did lose a ton of souls there, but no matter. There's a very important ring there that I needed to take care of. And the way they put those souls, kinda, suggests that you should probably go look into that place. Ah, son of a bee. That weed is sucked, man. It's not that big of an area, you know. It's easy, like you can see. It's not something hard or whatever. You just run in, and here you go. Ring of Steel Protection. Coming back is going to be a challenge because he's uh, 
going to be breathing a bit too much flame. Come on. Come on. Honestly, they could have made them a normal boss fight, to be honest. Ooh, that tail swipe. That tail swipe. Ow. That hurts. Nope. 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 I'm going to be noping all the way to where I was. I really like the uh, cosmetic of the uh, Gothard. Uh, I mean the Black Hand attire. But on the offset, it kinda lacks in resistances. A bit. Man. There you go, top myself off. get hit with a fireball, because why the hell not? Wait here until he sits down. Down, 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 down. Go back to the platform, and I was supposed to kill you right here instead of dying. Like a moron. Here's what I needed to do. Wait for him to, you know, position himself normally. Like so, and jump. And that's the end of him. One shot. 8,000 damage dealt. Never ever gonna be able to do so much or such an amount of damage in Dark Souls ever. And as we defeat him, immediately we get transported to a another area an interesting area maybe I get lucky and the summoner will summon Havel there's a small or rare chance that the summoner here who is going to be summoning random NPC or not NPC enemy fights you know tough fights and he usually summons a knight but sometimes he gets crafty and it's a rare chance and he summons Havel black swordsman no not really we don't need that don't we who are you are the knight okay never mind the trick in this particular fight is making certain you kill this fella wait for those and then just go and kill him no matter how many times I don't know is it limited or not but he's gonna be summoning a knight every time you defeat one so really this whole thing is pointless you know if you just fight and try to just kill these guys they'll be just respawning Anyway, sit down. Ooh, Drake Blood Greatsword. Nice. I think you can farm his uh, items and whatnot, which could be good. Ring ahead, therefore, just so it requires. Yeah, it's there. It's the pointless ring. Okay, let's take it. Why not? There we go. The Calamity Ring. We first come in contact with this ring after we defeat the Black Dragon in the DLC of the uh, Dark Souls 1 Prepare to Die Edition. And it's a pointless ring, literally. Speaking of pointless, let's do this and do this. Why? Whoa. Oh, I'm in a. I'm in the wrong place, okay, never mind. Okay, all right.
Hmm. Where is this area? Have I not been here? Oh yes, yeah. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, I understand now. For a second there, it seemed like it's a brand new area that I have not been to. After a second thought, and looking through, I know where I am. So two places I need to go. This one, and this one. Mind yourself, this is kind of a trap. And of course, let's activate the pointless, pointless shortcut. Here we go. There we go. Again, dual wielder. Problematic. Didn't I allocate? Um, I did. Hmm. Let me rearrange these then. So you and you and you just just in case. Just in case. Sometimes I need to aggro something. So I always need to have a ranged weapon on my possession. Right here we find a kind of an important weapon. The Dragon Slayer Spear. A weapon from the Age of the Gods. Where is it? Should be somewhere around here. Where is it? No. Saint. No, no. Oh, this one. No. Ah, uh, hello? <laughs> Where is it? Where on earth is it? Should be in the spear section. So right somewhere around here. Gargoyles. No, no, there you go. Dragon Slayer Spear. D with strength, C with dexterity, and D with faith. Because it has lightning attacks. Cross Spear. Associated with Ornstein, the Dragon Slayer. A weapon of the gods imbued with the strength of lightning. Really great against dragons. Two-handed thrust utilizes the support of the cross and requires great might, but can pierce deep into the flesh of dragons and send mere men flying. Lightning charge. Charge the spear. Charge with the spear at all at waist. To unwreathe with lightning, then release bolts with final thrust. Oh, it's that grab attack, isn't it? Cool. I'll use it some, some of these days. Again. If I couldn't, uh, if I was not afraid of copyright strikes, I would have been using For Whom the Bell Tolls every time you hear the uh, bell tolls in the game. It probably would have been funny. First ambush. Hi. Die. Two shield men. Okay, all right. And now you die. I always appreciate that you always keep your guard up, it's good. But it means... Die, man. Stop being so naughty. Okay. I guess somehow I got this guy too. Which is cool. Alright. Have a nice day, you two. I just need to learn their attacks a bit more carefully. Tough enemy ahead. Oh, this guy. Yeah, he's kind of tough. 
What makes him tough is the others that can after him. There you go. These are the problems. It would have been fine if you killed your kid. Oh, come on. I thought you were dead. You should have been dead. Now I can take care of you. Come here. Sit down. Sorry, I'm a bit silent because there's uh, a good deal of sirens going outside. Like I said it before, I live near a hospital and this is a common occurrence here. So sometimes I do need to stay silent in order to edit the sirens out. And because they are too much, too much noisy. Or too noisy, not too much. Hmm. I think there should be some sort of a... Ah, oh, there we go. I do remember there's a ladder here. Oh no, my... Oh, come on. Come on. Why are you doing this to me? Again, my controller decided I should, you know, take a look at the scenery. I don't know why, this is, uh, this is new to me. Never happened before in this, with this controller. Always works fine. I hate this. You know what? Ooh, ah, this is, this is interesting. Okay, so, let's fight Havel, live or die, and... Please let us move, there we go. And then we'll uh, end the episode. Nope. I should probably refrain from using weapon arts because... And it's Havel, it would be dumb for me to think that I'm gonna be going through his voice. He's the one who's going to be going through my boys. Come on, Havel. Okay. Ow! That hurts. That was a bit of the delay on that one. But, yeah. Good, because that stance is bad news. No. He always he even has a normal brawl. This dude has a ton of strength. Ton, ton of strength. And vitality. In order to be able to, you know. Ooh, no, 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 no. Ah, too late. That's me being dumb. That's me being dumb. What type of ring do you have to make you take so little damage? I'm interested. And you get the dragon tooth and have all this great shield. Now, which poses the question for me. Later on, I would be finding this guy near a slain dragon. Kind of telling you that he slew the dragon. What I want to know is if we kill him here, he, will he respawn later or not? Because we did get the dragon tooth and shield, which is interesting. We'll see. We'll see about this in the next episode. So this has been Yagami, ladies and gentlemen. A pleasure to be here with you. And I will see you on the next episode.